there's no better feeling than finding something that was either completely undervalued or forgotten or something like that. And, you know, you find that diamond in a rough and you flip it for a big profit. All right, we are going to be talking to Flip Man Dan in this video, and he is a new YouTuber who is crushing it with garage sales, making over $8,000 in profit with very little work. Welcome, Dan. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Oh, it's great to be here, Cairo, and, uh, you know, appreciate you having me on, and it's great to be talking to a fellow hustler. A fellow hustler, yes. Million dollar hustle, let's do it. So how did you get started with garage sales? This is not your full-time hustle. What is your full-time hustle? So my full-time hustle is, or my full-time gig, I guess you can call it, is I run a video production company. It's called DMAC Productions. We're based out of here in Phoenix, Arizona. And, uh, you know, my entire life I've been making videos pretty much since I was a little kid, borrowing my dad's camera. And after I got out of college here at uh, Arizona State University. I started my video production business. That was about 10 years ago. And um, it's a solid small business. I've been running it and uh, we do in the uh, mid six figures gross. So it's good enough to employ a couple people. And, you know, we, we uh, I make a, a pretty okay salary to live a comfortable life out here. But in order to, you know, get that extra money that I want for the, uh, to move up in life and, you know, buy things like a house and, and uh, you know, just the, what, what you would want to acquire over the years, I decided that uh, getting a side hustle would benefit me uh, greatly. So I looked at the different ways in which you can uh, get income from side hustles and garage sales stuck out to me because uh, where I'm at in Arizona, there is a huge suburban sprawl, I like to call it. Uh, the valley is just many, many miles of houses upon houses. And you always see these signs on a Saturday. If you drive down the street, there's these green signs everywhere that say garage sale, yard sale, estate sale, the, these sort of things. And uh, I had a small Mazda car uh, back when I first started doing this. And um, you know, tried to fit many things into my car a as I could. And uh, with these small purchases and, you know, tried my hand at selling them on Craigslist and was one of the early adopters of OfferUp. And, you know, I'd caught the bug and this was about, I'd say three years ago. And over the years, it's definitely gotten much more serious, uh, but now I, I love it and I, I don't miss a Saturday. Usually I go out Fridays as well uh, if I can. And uh, yeah, I, I enjoy it. And it is currently my, my main side hustle. Wow, that's amazing. So how much time do you reckon it takes you? I mean, you're doing Saturday morning, sometimes Fridays, so roughly a week. Yeah, so I'd say about anywhere from, I'd give it seven to 10 hours a week of actual work. Um, you know, I would say six to seven hours of on a Saturday morning, usually get out there early and hit the streets and try to gather as much items that you think you can flip for a profit, bring it back to your garage, or if you have a storage unit, bring it back to there, wherever you're going to start going through the items, taking photos and whatnot of the items and posting them on either offer up eBay, Poshmark, you pick it. There's plenty of reselling apps out there and wait for the calls and offers to come in. And then those final three hours of the week are facilitating those sales. You go to the garage sales and it's also fun, I would guess. Otherwise you wouldn't want to be spending, you know, your Saturday mornings traipsing around or, or does it become quite a burden sometimes? Oh, it is not a burden. I, I wouldn't be doing it if it was a burden. I think it's a, a ton of fun. Uh, I love it because it's always something new. You, you get out there and you have no idea what's going to be at these sales. And on top of it, you get to meet and talk to very cool people. You know, just these, these people have stories. And a lot of times you're doing them a favor by taking these items off their hands. So there's a mutually good feeling about going garage sailing. And, you know, I, I come back with some amazing stories, meeting some great people, but also, you know, the opportunities that you go and you find in these treasures out there. 
And, uh, you know, th there's no better feeling than finding something that was either completely undervalued or forgotten or something like that. And, you know, you find that diamond in a rough and you flip it for a big profit. So on that, what has been your biggest diamond so far? So, man, the, the biggest diamond in the rough, uh, there, there's been a, a decent amount of them. What I've found to be the most consistent in Arizona is patio furniture, actually. Um, mm. A lot of people really uh, undervalue used patio furniture. And if you have something like a truck and, um, you know, you can move the items, that's of great value as well. Because a lot of the times people have these items in their backyard, they're collecting dust and they just want them out of their backyard and out of their house. And there's been times in the past where I've bought whole patio sets for $5 and brought it home, cleaned it off and flipped it for upwards of $200. Um, you know, and a lot of times it, there, if you go for those, now that, that particular patio set was in bad condition, but you know, you hose it down and clean it up a bit and it, it can end up looking great. Maybe even get some, uh, patio cushions, uh, as a replacement. And you can find those a lot of different places on offer up. People sell patio cushions themselves, uh, and you can find them for low prices. But uh, if you work your way up with that patio furniture stuff, you can find sets at garage sales that are decent, you know, and you can potentially make even more profit, say, buying a set for $100 or $200. You know, these, these sets that are new can go for anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 and up uh, if you buy them new. So they are a lot of money when you get them from the store and it's the biggest disparity I've found with um, how people just put a low price on it and we're, when really it's worth a lot more. $5 to $200 is a huge margin. So that's amazing. You do quite a lot of uh, cleaning up, but not just in terms of like the dirt, you actually repaint and revarnish and, and probably clean the cushions and stuff. Is that the norm or is that, was that just, you know, that particular case with that, I think it was a, like a dark green, was it a dark green one in your video? Yes. So that, that one in particular, you know, a lot of the times, uh, if you have the ability to say, remove rust or quickly put on, uh, a new coat of paint or something like that, and you want to put in those extra couple hours to get the biggest bang for your buck, I would highly recommend doing it. And it is, uh, I would say cathartic to bring something like this on, and fix it up and then it it looks amazing and then you get to share that with someone who is really going to find the value in it and uh i mean it, it does take a little bit more elbow grease but you will find that the difference in profit dollars comes down to how good you can make the item look and cleaning items is key in in flipping and uh getting the biggest bang for your buck that's so cool so do you have you say that they, they would come to your place to look at it. Is that at your house? Is that at your office? Do you have a storage unit for all this stuff? Or Yeah, so currently I have a garage, you know, I would say my offer up garage studio is what I like to call it. Uh, you know, in, inside that place is a, as soon as you open the door, it's a photo backdrop. And then I have permanent, oh. permanent lights. So uh, when I bring the items in, I just immediately put them on the backdrop, take photos of them. And then I have uh, a storage rack where I put the smaller items. And if it's a, a patio set, for example, I'll actually bring it to my backyard. And I'm fortunate enough to have, um, you know, a backyard and a garage. Not everyone has these things. So I'm definitely using them to my advantage. But um, one tip I would give is that if you're going to take photos of an item, it helps to take them in their natural setting. So if you're going to say, take pictures of a patio set, you're going to want to do it in a backyard. That looks nice. Not necessarily on a photo backdrop because that wouldn't necessarily make sense. You wouldn't find it there. Um, and same thing with, uh, you know, either cutlery or if t-shirts that anything that you're going to sell, you're going to want to have it in the, its kind of natural setting. So, um, having that at your disposal is definitely an advantage. 
So your photos must definitely set you apart. I mean, if you've got like a fixed little studio there, um, do you find that the photos are the most important part or is it, does it come down to price a lot as well? I would say photo, there, there's a lot of ways and things that go into whether you make a sale or not. I would say photos is number one. Um, you, you really need to have the proper lighting and not only the proper lighting, but the amount of photos is definitely important because statistically, you know, you can talk to these companies like Poshmark and OfferUp. They will tell you that the more photos you post in your post, the more likelihood you will get to the sale quicker and you will get more money for the sale. And I would always recommend taking all sides of the item that you are uh, selling, as well as any product information that can be found either on the bottom of the item or the back of the item, and be as descriptive as possible. So be as descriptive as possible in the title, as well as the description. Always add the dimensions of the product um, and the history of the product. If you can figure out the history of the product from the person you're buying it from, um, all the better because these are the things that potential buyers want to know when they're going to purchase something. Okay. So you're making over a thousand dollars every month with fairly little time and you enjoy it. And firstly, I think that is the most important thing for anyone wanting to start a side hustle. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to want to scale it. You're not going to want to keep doing it. So man, kudos that you found something that you really like. Now, what is the next step? Like how, if someone was starting out with, you know, garage sale flipping, what do they do next? Right. There, there's a lot of things that a lot of ways in which you can, can go with this. Now, obviously what I'm focusing in currently is in-person sales uh, and in-person flips. So there is kind of a ceiling to that uh, where there's only so many items you can fit in, you say your own garage or storage unit that you can physically uh, facilitate those sales in person. Now, you know, you can eventually scale it up to where you have a storefront or something like that. And, you know, you're in my case, if I'm uh, specializing in patio furniture, you can almost open a furniture business. But um, that that is kind of a, a resale type furniture business. And they do have those currently. So that that's one route that that could potentially go. But um, where I potentially see me uh, pivoting towards is more towards the shipping aspects of it. Now, uh, it, when you go into that realm of shipping items with uh, reselling, th I think the biggest important thing to do would be to niche down or find your niche. Um, and the most people that I've talked to have recommended that and to just find it is what that you're passionate about and what you have the most knowledge in and be it fashion or cards, shoes uh, is a big one. Uh, you know, the vintage clothing thing is, is huge as well. And uh, you know, just leveraging your reviews and that sort of thing on, on these different platforms to pick the right platform for yourself and uh, pick that pathway towards uh, more profit. Now, what do you think your niche? So you're talking more about using sites like eBay to to actually ship around the U.S., right? And Correct. what would your niche be? Well, I'm still figuring that out, actually. Um, you know, a, a lot of what I've been getting into recently is vinyl. Uh, so there, there's a large uh, reselling market for vinyl, and uh, so I'm going to see how that goes with shipping vinyl. Now, that that's a whole another can of worms where you, you have to get the, the vinyl shipping materials as well. And that, that is an upfront cost. And you also need to worry about, uh, you know, the quality of the albums and if they're going to replay or not, or if they're warped or something like that. So th those are the kind of things you need to think about upfront and same thing with clothing. Um, not only do you need to know the, the clothing upfront, but you kind of need to uh, quality control the items, make sure they're in good shape and uh, make sure they're as advertised to, to start selling them. But my, my biggest uh, piece of advice would be to just get started and just start listing items. And the more items you can list, the more you will learn. And it doesn't matter if you know, you're, you're making these upfront investments 
and they become dead merchandise because when that does occur, uh, you learn something and you, you learn what to avoid in the future and think of it as you're investing in a learning experience, even if the items do fail. And obviously everyone has these uh, experiences where uh, they're, they're in the, or dealing with dead merchandise. But in my case, what I love about the garage selling aspect of it is that if I do have dead merchandise, guess what? I can have a garage sale and put everything out for super cheap and people can, can buy it. And that's kind of my uh, process and my cycle of how I'm doing business currently is I'll go to these garage sales, list all the items on offer up. If things are, aren't selling, then I usually have at least one garage sale uh, every four months. And one thing that I've also found is a, another route to, to profit is I just put it out there like, hey, um, I sell items and I'm very good at selling. I have a, an offer up account that has tons of reviews. I have the offer up promote plus you know, account so I can promote your items to get them in front of more people if, if needed. And when I put that out into the universe on my social media, um, people locally have hired me to work for them to sell, either liquidate their houses, have garage sales for them. And uh, the, that, that's also a route. Uh, they're what's called estate sale companies, uh, people that do this professionally that will go into houses that are either selling or someone has passed away and they need to liquidate all the items in a house. Then an estate sale company will come in and list all the items, sell them in an estate sale or a garage sale or what have you and then take a large portion of the pro profit from those items. And that's how they, they conduct their business. So, uh, you know, I've been doing this, but not necessarily uh, having estate sales when, when I go about doing this. I've teamed up with some Airbnb uh, managers like yourself, actually. Uh, and so, some of these guys have uh, a lot of properties, say some of the properties that they manage the owners wanted to sell it and it was filled with just like Airbnb furniture that no one really wanted to claim. Well, they call me and I show up to their house. I list literally everything in their house at, you know, bottom basement prices. And, you know, I've, I've done this where I've sold literally everything in the house within one to two days and wow. I have split the profit. So I just tell them, look, you don't need to charge me anything. Don't pay for my time. Nothing. I'm just going to list everything and we'll split what we get 50 50. It's as simple as that. And they agree to it because they, they want the items out. And that is kind of where I can see my expertise being valued and my niche going. If the shipping thing doesn't work out, I can kind of pivot more towards that. But right now I'm just going where the money is and uh, you know, garage sales and helping people out with their liquidation sales. That's kind of where my, my current uh, expertise is in. So I guess we can't talk about side hustles or entrepreneurship without talking about delegating and scaling. So at the moment, you're still trading quite a bit of time for money, at least with your side hustle, maybe not with your, your main gig anymore. But how would you see yourself taking yourself out of the side hustle equation going forward to grow it? Right. So I've kind of just began with that process of uh, delegating some of the duties that I don't uh, necessarily want to do. Um, and I've found a lot of help with virtual assistants. Now um, you can, there, there's ways to get virtual assistants in like Bangladesh and India for like dirt cheap. Like, you know, you can get these people working for like dollars on the hour. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, there's the, the benefit of doing that is obviously that you're, you're going to spend very little amount of money to have them doing tasks like in my case, um, you know, I have finance spreadsheets where I list things for what I bought and sold them for. It's just your basic financial PL, profit and loss breakdowns. And uh, I, I have more buckets uh, where I list, you know, the description, the link, how many pictures I posted, did I promote it, you know, all these things that I'm keeping track of to kind of build a bigger picture of, hey, what's selling? How quickly is it selling? what do I need to focus on is really what I'm trying to figure out when I look back at the data. Uh, and 
I just want to learn what I should focus on my purchase and or what I should focus my niche on. And that becomes a little mundane. That's not where my expertise is. So instead of going the, the Bangladesh route, uh, I, I locally got a virtual assistant and this person kind of knows me and I, yes, it's more expensive, but um, I found that it's a little bit more hands-on and I can rely on this person a little bit more because we're in the same time code. I can speak with them, you know, when, when we have time and they, they do a great job of just crunching the numbers for me in a short period of time. And I just use uh, a little bit of my, you know, operating expense on that. And I can definitely foresee virtual assistants helping out. And then down the line, if I have a lot of inventory, that sort of thing, I can see hiring people on a part-time basis uh, just to come down on a Saturday and help me um, ingest items and post them. And that, that that's a, a big thing. And if I have so many items where I can't get to the um, negotiation process on offer up, or I, I can't facilitate these sales, then yes, I can bring people on. But at this point, it's not an issue for me. It's, you know, just a couple hours and, you know, they're coming to my house. So it's really, uh, it's pretty incredible how easy it is for me. And actually, um, what I would recommend doing, and this sounds a little bit crazy, but I facilitate a ton of my sales just by putting the items out under my mailbox and saying, hey, it's under my mailbox, put the cash inside the mailbox. Like, and I, I mean, obviously I have some control over that because I, I do have a security camera and it, it's right on the ring doorbell. I mean, you can, you're not an idiot if you're going there and picking something up. And the beauty of OfferUp is it's, you know, you have a linked Facebook account and you're verified. And I'm not going to sell to someone who isn't verified. If you don't have a profile picture and you have zero reviews, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to facilitate a sale that way. Um, but people that have good reviews and are verified, I trust them to go to my house and drop off money and take the item. And I've been doing this for, I'd say this past year, I've been, you know, completely, uh, trying to facilitate sales by dropping the item off. If it's less than say a hundred dollars, just putting it under my mailbox and telling them to pick it up a hundred percent of the time people have put money in my mailbox. Not one person has grab the item and gone. And in fact, actually people have put more money than what the ask was on multiple occasions. People have given me more than my ask because they're either appreciative of it. They didn't have change or they're just good people. So uh, have faith in the universe. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. So I noticed the same thing with music. Like when I, when I sell my CDs at a concert, if I say pay whatever you think it's worth, and I used to do this tactic when I did free walking tours as well. I would say, you know, cause there you rely solely on the tips. And if you say, pay whatever you think it's worth, you know, most people pay anywhere between five and $20, right? Then people usually pick the middle number. So by just saying, pay what you think it's worth, some people will pay me 50 pounds, $60, whatever for a CD with only four songs on it, which on my website is, you know, $10. So I love, I love that strategy that you're trusting people. You're giving people the opportunity to, to basically fleece you, to steal. And they, and they realize that, wow, you are a trustworthy person. You're putting trust in them. And they're paying it forward by, you know, one, giving you the money and sometimes giving you more than you asked for. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really been incredible. And uh, some of the lessons I've learned to get some of my time back is I've really automated a lot of my negotiation messaging. And I do that with shortcuts on my phone. So I would highly recommend doing this if, you're, uh, if you have listed a lot of items and you're having very similar conversations. Like for example, on OfferUp, if you list something, people are always gonna ask, is this item available? Is this item available? You get this question like 4,000 times a day. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I have it automated in my phone if I just, you know, type like, for example, like AA or something like that, it will automatically generate a message that says, yes, this is available. So I'll just pull up my phone and say AA send, and then it'll send that thing. Same thing with people picking up items under my mailbox. If it's out under my mailbox, I've automated like UU, for example, 
to say, hey, the item is under my mailbox. Just put the cash in the mailbox when you pick it up. You know, it's, that's one sentence that I'm saying a lot. So you need to think about these shortcuts to save yourself the seconds that add up across across a day. Wow, that's so smart. All right, I just want to pivot in the conversation quickly because I'm sure anyone watching, they're going to be like, wow, amazing side hustle. You know, I love that, that hustler spirit. But you have a main gig, a business that you started from scratch that is, you know, six figures. So I'm sure they want to know a little bit more about that, about how you got started. Um, in terms of that, I know you were interested in video production when you were growing up. But there's a big difference between being interested in something and actually getting paying clients. So do you focus mainly on corporates? Do you focus on like B2B stuff? Do you focus on weddings? Like where, where does the main revenue come from? Yeah, so the main revenue at this point is B2B. Um, we've honed our company at this point. In the beginning, you know, where when it was just myself straight out of college, I was like, I'm making a video production company. All we're filming is models, music videos, and extreme sports. And, uh, you know, I did that for a year, which was a lot of fun, but uh, made zero dollars or close to nothing. And I was pretty much working for free. And, but I had a badass reel at that point. So I put that together and, and I realized, look, you know, my expertise is in making the videos and I need some help with the business end of it. So I brought on a business partner who was a good friend of mine and I made the prudent decision to bring on a business partner who had a different skill set than me. And I would highly recommend doing this if you're going to pick a business partner. Always think about what are they bringing to the table that I currently cannot or don't want to do. And uh, my business partner, Joe, he's an expert at both marketing and client relationships because I didn't want to sit around all day writing proposals and that sort of thing. That, that wasn't my bag. So I needed some help in that area. And um, he is amazing at, at those things as well as, um, you know, handling the financials of getting deposits and keeping the numbers straight and that sort of thing. And we just have a, a great working marriage, I would say. And over the past, uh, we, I brought him on in about 2013. And uh, once I brought him on and we, we figured that we need to go where the money is and that's uh, business to business and, and corporate uh, videography. And we, we do a lot of web videos, a lot of, uh, you know, pretty much web videos or anything that you would see if you go onto any corporation's website and they have something that's like an about us, like what is the company about? Testimonial videos are big, instructional videos. These are all video types of videos that uh, companies leverage to bring more dollars into their uh, business or bring brand awareness to their business and uh, commercials as well. So over the years, we've, we've kind of pivoted towards that. And uh, uh, I still enjoy the shooting the extreme sports and models if, uh, if it's available, but uh, obviously less so now, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a great experience. And I would say the, the biggest key to us reaching that six figure mark and, uh, and beyond is the work that, we have done with SEO or search engine optimization for those who don't know what that means, which pretty much means how you get found on Google. And when someone searches your services, you want to pop up high and us doing the groundwork early to have uh, a number one seating on our keywords is really what has brought the business to where it's at. And uh, what's called pull marketing instead of push marketing as DJ Khaled would say, a major key. DJ Khaled. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, that's so cool. That is so cool. And then with your YouTube channel, obviously you're leveraging the experience and the expertise from both of your businesses, from your first gig and your side hustle to make a really captivating, very pretty like, and beautifully shot channel about flipping garage sale items. So I, I absolutely love it. Everybody should totally check out that channel down below. All the links to Flip Man Dan will be down in the description. Dan, is there anything else, any parting words, maybe uh, some encouragement for anyone wanting to start in like garage sale flips, or maybe, I mean, they're on YouTube, they might be aspiring YouTubers or they might be aspiring videographers, you know, maybe, a inspiring words to get them their, their first clients in the video world? Man, to, to get your, your first clients and uh, 
to get your first sales, all I got to say is just get started. And, uh, you know, the barrier to entry to make money nowadays is so low. All it takes is drive mm -hmm. to make these things happen. Uh, you know, right now you can pull out your smartphone and film videos and download an app and edit them. And the knowledge is out there on YouTube. The knowledge is at your fingertips on how to do these things. People have done this. People have made the mistakes and they've talked about it. Look for those people, look for those stories. And if you have the drive, if you have the want to make a profit or find your passion, you know, the world is yours, man. Just go out there and get it. Wow. That's amazing. All right, Dan, thank you so much for this. It has been eye opening and very interesting. And I wish I had some more garages I could attend in rainy London. But uh, I'll leave I'll leave that to the pros, man. I'll leave that all to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Cairo. It's it's been a it's been a great time. Guys, you can check out all of Dan's stuff. I'll pop the links in the description. So make sure you go check out his channel too.